OBS is a software with lots of options for live streaming. With its virtual cam, it can be used to incorporate professional equipment into your webinar. With OBS, you can also create multicam settings or different settings for your webinar. For example, you can use OBS to create split screen, picture in picture, you can add filters, you can add images, you can add videos, you can add everything you want. Picture OBS as an empty canvas and the possibilities are endless. But first I'm going to show you how you can set up a basic setup for your webinar using OBS. The first thing you need to do when you open OBS for the first time is create a scene. There should be one already there and if not, click on the plus icon bottom left of your scene dock to add a scene. You can add more than one scene, but for the basic setup we only need one. After that you need to add some sources. To add sources, click on the plus icon bottom left of your source dock. Here you will see a variety of different sources. First we're going to add a video capture device. Here you can choose if you want to add a new capture or use one if you already added one to another scene. But because this is our first and only scene, let's create a new one. I always recommend to name the capture the same as the product you are filming with. So in this case I want to add a Logitech webcam. So I will name this new source Logitech webcam. After that click OK and you'll see a window properties for Logitech webcam. Here you need to tell OBS what you want as a source device. So I will select the C92 Pro Stream webcam which is a Logitech webcam. In case you only see a small image on the top left of your canvas like this, go to resolution and frames per second type and select custom. Go to resolution and select the proper resolution of 1920 by 1080p, also known as 16 by 9 aspect ratio. As you can see, now the webcam has filled up the entire canvas. And click OK. You can transform your camera image. Go to edit, go to transform. And here you can select things such as flip horizontally and flip vertical. Great, now you have added the camera into OBS. Now, on to the audio input capture. First thing you need to do is add a capture. But before that, let's make our lives easier and add the audio mixer to our view. Go to view, select docs and go to audio mixer. Select audio mixer and the audio mixer should appear right in the middle. Now we can add an audio input capture just like we did with the video input device. So once again, go to the bottom left of your source doc Click on add and add an audio input capture. Create new and name it after your mic, in this case the Blue Yeti mic. Click on OK and as you can see the properties for the Blue Yeti microphone window are a bit different than with the webcam. Here you just simply need to select which device you want, in this case the Yeti stereo microphone. Click OK and if it all went well you should see in the audio mixer that sound is coming in OBS. Great, now you have added your audio input capture. At last we're going to add a display capture, but before that a small tip. As you go to your source dock you'll see these eye icons on every source. Click on these and the source will not be visible or audible if you have this scene on. To add a display capture go to sources again, click on the plus icon bottom left and select display capture. The properties for the display capture are different from the two we have seen so far. Here you can choose the capture method and the different types of monitors if you have multiple connections. For screen sharing I would always recommend using a second monitor. One for your presentation that you can share and select as a display capture in OBS and one so you can see OBS or the Webinar Geek Live environment. I would recommend this because if you don't have two monitors you get the Drost effects once you go to OBS again which looks like this. Also, you can select if you want your cursor to be visible during the screen share. You can tick the box left to the capture cursor to change this. Now click on Start Virtual Cam. And now go to your Webinar Geek Live environment. As a camera, select OBS Virtual Camera and see if you have selected the right microphone. Now you have your setup ready using Webinar Geek and OBS. It is possible to add different scenes. You might want to do this if you have a bit more experience in OBS or if you're just ambitious. You can add an extra scene in OBS. Click on the plus icon bottom left of your scene dock to add a scene. And just like with the sources, it is very handy to give them recognizable names so you know what scene is what for. 
You might want to use multiple scenes in case you want to change your image in the middle of your webinar. Let's say that you have a logo that you want to show, but only during the Q&A session. In that case, you can add the logo as an image to your Q&A scene, but not in your presentation scene. You can add an image like any other source and give it a name so you know what's what. After you make your scene, you can switch between the scenes by clicking on them. As you change the scene, you can see that there is a bit of a transition in between the scenes. This way of switching is called cross-dissolve, and in OBS this is called fade. OBS has a standard transition duration of 300 milliseconds. You can change the way of the transition and the amount of milliseconds in the scene transition dock. If you don't see this dock, go to the top of your screen, select the view, and after that go to docks and click scene transitions. There is also an option to save a scene collection in OBS. Perfect for when you need to host a webinar in the same technical setting or if you have such a great webinar that you need to do preparation with your scenes and don't want to lose it. All you have to do is click on the scene collection at the top and give your collection an easy to understand name and click OK. After that you will find yourself in your newly created scene collection so you can add new scenes and sources. To remove a scene collection, click on the scene collection that you want to delete. Go to scene collection again and click on remove. If you have a professional microphone that you can't plug in your computer straight away, you'll need something that is called an audio mixer or interface. If this is the case, then small problems can occur using OBS. For example, the audio is only audible to the left or right speakers. If this is the case, then maybe you can find your solution in the Advanced Audio Properties menu. Once again, go to the Advanced Audio Properties. Here you can change the audio setting for your devices. You will see here that there is a box called Mono. Mono meaning that the same audio will be audible to the left and right speaker. Select this and click on Close. If it all went well, you should be able to hear it to the left and right speaker now. And since we are talking about audio, let's go back to the advanced audio properties to see another common problem. Your audio and video isn't in sync. So once again, click the gear icon in the audio mixer, go to the advanced audio properties. Here you see a small menu called sync offset. And here you can change the milliseconds of how long you want your sync to be offset. If you are streaming with a Logitech C92 Pro webcam, usually around 100 milliseconds should do the trick. Just for reference, 1000 milliseconds equals 1 second. So please check your video and your audio and change the settings until it's in sync again. Another topic that gets thrown around a lot, since we are talking about webinars, is bitrate. Now the word bitrate sounds quite techy and difficult, but I'll put it simple. Bitrate is the rate of data. So basically, the quality. The higher the bitrate, the higher the quality. So you might think, that sounds amazing, let's put it up to a million. But hold your horses. You might want to think about that twice. Your computer and your internet connection need to be able to handle the bitrate. Because a healthy stream is created thanks to a good internet connection by cable and a computer that can handle a proper bitrate. So at least you can send out in 720p and 30 frames per second at least. And I say proper bitrate because you don't want to set it up too high. If you set it up too high you are going to ask a lot from your CPU and your internet connection and the high bitrate won't even stream. That's why you always need to check the stream and see if it's still healthy. In OBS, click on Start Streaming. Luckily, OBS shows the color indication bottom right to check if your stream is healthy. You can also check some more details. Click on View and then on Stats. Here you will find info about your CPU usage, available disk space, frames per second and your total data output just to name a few. The great thing about the stats is that it opens another OBS window. So you don't have to go back to OBS and see these stats. You can just leave the stat window open. But back to the bitrate. To change the bitrate setting in OBS, go to the top left and click on File. Click Settings and go to Output. Here you will find the bitrate settings for your video and audio. Now, a small tip. Set the audio bitrate as high as possible. 
since audio is more important than video during a webinar. Here you can also change the video bitrate setting, but please know if your computer can handle a certain bitrate. So always do a test stream to check. And oh, did you know? It's also possible to record your scenes in OBS, meaning that every source in the scene will be recorded in a video. In the controls dock, click on start recording and OBS will start recording your scenes and every source attached to it. You can see if and how long you are recording right here. After you've recorded, hit stop recording to stop your recording. If you want to view your OBS recording, go to file and click on show recording. Now OBS will directly open the file location to where your recording is stored. As you can see, the file format OBS uses for your OBS recordings is an MKV file and not an MP4 file. OBS does this for a reason. The benefits of recording on an MKV file is that if your computer crashes during your recording, OBS will save everything on that MKV file till that point. For example, let's say you need to give an hour long lecture, but after half an hour, your computer crashes. OBS will save the first half hour of your lecture as an MKV file. With an MP4 file, that will not happen. If your computer crashes during an MP4 recording, everything will be lost. So please think about these settings. The way you change the setting in OBS goes as follows. Click on file at the top left. Click settings and go to output just like with the bitrate settings. Here you'll see that you can also change the recording settings such as the location to where your recording is stored, the recording quality and also the recording format. Click on recording format and select MP4. But what if you want to record on an MKV format but need an MP4 file afterwards. You can't always open or edit an MKV file. OBS is your solution once again. In OBS, you can remux your MKV recordings directly into an MP4 without having to go to a sketchy website to convert it. To do this, go to File and click Remux Recording. Here, you can drag and drop the MKV file in OBS or click on the three dots and select a recording from your file explorer. After that, just click on Remux and OBS will create an MP4 file. Then OBS will say your recording is remuxed. It will be saved in the same location as your original MKV files. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about webinars on how to host them, what gear to use or what it's like to work at a tech startup, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like this video and hit the notification bell. And let me know, do you use OBS for your webinars? Thank you so much for watching and see you on the next one.